So when a new development in Tanzi claims that the lead investigator in this case, Brigadier Bongani Kenenda, offered him a 3 million rand bribe on the 21st of June 2020. So this was just two days after his first alleged confession and three days before his alleged second confession on the 24th of June 2020. But Kenenda has poured cold water on this claim. I've never heard it. It's the first time. Mm. But I must say, my lord, it's absolutely not true. Uh, it's a lie. Uh, I'll put it in that strong context. It's absolute lies. There's no budget, my lord, that I have even to make such an offer. I didn't have a budget of three million for the unit during that time. It's, it's, I didn't have that budget. Let's just start there. I don't have it, my lord. Now, and I don't know even if it was available, my lord, why would I do that? The accused cooperated with me on the 18th. He told me that he's willing to make a statement freely and voluntarily. Subsequent to that, on the 19th in the morning, he made a confession. The confession was made in the morning of the 19th. What is the point of going to him on the 21st and offer him whatever promises? There was no promises made. On the confession that he made on the 19th, the accused that are before court were already implicated. There's nothing that he left out. On the, uh, the morning confession, although I got it a day or two days later, but he implicated everyone, my lord. So this assertion that I would have made a, a proposal with him, to, he implicated the role each and every person played if, 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 if one looks in, into that confession, my lord. It's self-explanatory. You don't have to ask anything. You simply have to follow and collaborate what is contained there, my lord. Kinendar again denied that any of the accused were tortured and that he ever forced Ndanzi to sign a prepared confession. Where they stopped, according to his version, they stopped at a place next to... Um, Where they had discarded ATM machines. ATM blah, 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 blah. machines, yes. That's where he was assaulted. <laughs> He was assaulted up to the time when you arrived on that night with um, Sergeant Mkhola and that male person with the braces. That's when you were driving a white BMW. You sat on the at the back of on the edge of the back of the motor vehicle of that uh, BMW, and you took out some document wherein. He told him that he must sign here, otherwise they'll proceed with what they were doing. Mm. Yeah, so my lord, <coughs> but that's not true, my lord. Um, um, after the court proceedings, after accused one, accused two was not enrolled, what I recall, uh, and I recall this on, on what I, what is documented in the AVL, um, it, I might not be precise with, with, with everything, from, I'm not sure about the stops of Alberton, but subsequent to the Sergeant Mohane leaving East Rand, he went to Morocco. From Morocco, the AVL shows my lot in that afternoon that he drove towards Pretoria, taking, I think it's the N4, to the Northwest province. Nowhere did that vehicle drive back to uh, Paraguanat Hospital and stop. The AVL record shows that. While Kininda maintains Ndanzi was legally represented during his alleged second confession, Ndanzi, though, denies this. Accused number two will deny having instructed Mr. Mchiako, will deny that he signed a confession before a magistrate. The only document he signed was a document shown to him in Jemistin around industrial area. That's why he was compelled because he was beaten there to sign the document. What I know on the 23rd, he accused two, stood up and said, this is my attorney, before the introductions by Mr. Mjiaho. That is the first part. The second part on the 23rd, on the, sorry, on the 24th, when um, at a later stage, I received the con confession document. By the way, that did not have blood stains because I have the original 
uh, confession document, and it's available, my note. There are no blood stains. They, they say it must have blood stains. No, it doesn't have, my note. I can show it to the court, uh, and, and we dealt with it. I think no, you can't show it to me. Do you want to see it, Mr. No. Gomezul? No, my lord. It's, it's okay, a, fine. Yeah. It's available, my lord. It does not have a single stain of blood that, that I can put it that far. Now, um, and in that document, Mr. Mjiako is recorded. By, by the magistrate as the legal representative of accused number two. Mm. Furthermore, my lord, on the first appearance of this matter, I've, I've, I've said this before, Ms. M. Giaco is on record in Boxbeck Magistrate Court. He further went on record in Pukeng where accused two was recorded. Um, so I don't understand, my lord, why would such a person appear in all these matters more than once, yet there are no instructions uh, from, from accused two. So court adjourned early as the defense wanted the full transcript and disc of the accused's first appearance to determine whether Ndanzi fired Mjiago as his legal representative. Chris Alder Lewis, SABC News at the High Court in Pretoria.